So thank you for coming, and we have a really exciting presentation today. Um, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm sure you guys are as well. So we're going to get started. Um, I just wanted to introduce Ava Sweeney. Um, Ava, Ava Sweeney <clears throat> worked as an architect in Germany before she was awarded a Fulbright scholarship in 1996. She graduated in 1998 with a master's degree in architecture from the Southern California Institute of Architecture. In 2007, Ava launched with her husband, Brian Sweeney, and her brother, Bernard Zunkeler, Art Lab 21, a private initiative to aid young international artists finding their way in the art world. In 2010, the Sweeney's institutionalized Art Lab 21 as a nonprofit foundation after finishing construction of ESMOA, an art laboratory in 2013, they remain strong supporters of public art projects for artists, um, artist exchange and for art education through the Art Lab 21 Foundation. So um, without further ado, this is Ava Sweeney. And thank you for coming. Thank you very much for joining us. And I have the pleasure now to introduce John Van Hammersfeld. Um, John has been an icon in the art scene for more than 50 years. And uh, he was born in Baltimore, but moved with the age of seven, I believe. Uh, or ten. No, nine. 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 Turning with, nine. With his family to Palos Verdes, where he immediately picked up surfing, which became a lifelong passion and also an influence in his artwork. Uh, he is, his career immediately took off, I think when you were 23, with the uh, design of the famous movie poster Endless Summer, which I'm sure you all know it. And of course, with this incredible splash in your career start, he was hired to go to New York to work for uh, Capitol Records, where then you um, designed uh, like more than 300 uh, record covers, like for superstar rock bands, the uh, Rolling Stones, the Beatles, the Grateful Dead. And um, then after that, he, you came back to Los Angeles and you started your own company, which produced very iconographic and famous posters, uh, which was called Pinnacle. So John had his fingers in a lot of projects. When I researched uh, all his work, he was working also, uh, he was teaching at Call Arts and at SciArc, where I went to school. Art Center, yeah. And Art Center, right. And um, he also was chosen as uh, one of the artists for the 1984 Olympics to create a 360 foot long uh, mural, which was right next to the Colosseum. We will later on see a beautiful image of that work. Uh, John worked with a lot of famous Californian architects to enhance their buildings. He created two wonderful publications immediately sold out, and I see there are actually some more publications, so please take a look maybe after the lecture to uh, carefully skim through it because the books immediately sold out, and I don't even know if they are still available maybe on the... Amazon anti somehow or another does it. Yeah? yeah. All right, great. People sell them back through. So used. since... 2013, uh, John focuses on public art and especially murals and our city is one of the lucky cities who has the water tank mural and I encourage you after this talk to walk up to Grant Avenue and take a look and really enjoy uh, this beautiful work of art. So. Needless to say, John has and continues to be an amazing influence for artists with his colorful, iconic, and mystical work. So let's take a closer look. As you can see, surfer artist. So the influence. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so in, uh, I, went, um, I started in Palos Verdes every day for five days a week you know, to go to the art department of El Segundo High School and then graduated from there. Um, but what kept me mostly, uh, you know, really busy was surfing on the weekends where I met everybody you ever wanted to meet uh, between Rincon and, and uh, La Jolla. And so that was really uh, my education from a much more wider point of view than school. Then I would return to school and I would work on, on, uh, on painting for two hours rather than one hour. I had a special 
special two classes because I was dyslexic and, <laughs> and it was favored more in that area. So right now we have the Endless Summer poster on. Do you want to mention a little bit like the, the procedure, how you created this amazing image, which is... I was the art known. director of uh, Surfer Magazine and, and uh, I would meet all these different advertising or people who wanted to advertise. So in that process, I, I uh, started up with a guy named uh, R. Paul Allen who was the promoter for the uh, Bruce Brown films and Bruce was doing a new film that year and he was taking two years to do it so it was a big, you know, a big uh, feature for them. Uh, and so I was asked to do a poster and I was still going to Art Center College of Design and then I was still an art director. So I was going, you know, from an international sort of school down to a very provincial town so I really brought my sophisticated uh, design ability to this little tiny town and I, built, and I designed this poster, which then they degraded down to their needs, you know, but later, three or four years later, uh, as the film progressed in, in popularity, um, it went to New York and the poster was uh, printed there and distributed around the world. And uh, so at 20, three, 24 years old, I mean, I was just in shock. I was an international designer all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, so I showed the poster uh, to Capitol Records and they hired me and I did the Beatles Magical Mystery Tour album cover and, uh, and um, you see the Beach Boys Wild Honey, you know, and, there were, and Linda Ronstadt was there and, uh, and, you know, all the groups would come through the office so I met a lot of people so I decided I would get into the promotion business of doing rock concerts and, and then, uh, and through that I could do these posters and I could do the uh, campaigns which were very much uh, part of my graphic design abilities and so these two posters are like the most famous of the of the LA posters done during that time. While I was doing while I was doing Pinnacle, the uh, Jefferson Airplane uh, wanted me to do a cover for them, and so I um, was able to do this uh, atomic bomb with the band, you know, inside the cloud. So the you know sort of the baby boomers, you know, and and, <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it, uh, they were like the Rolling Stones of uh, America at that point, and um, the, the other poster is sort of related to it. The 60s were so uh, wild uh, for that four or five years, from uh, 64, I guess, through 69, and all the parties and the drugs and the rock and roll people, and just, you know, just a really exciting period of time for everybody. Um, at the end, uh, it all sort of flamed out. We all had to go back to work. And so as I, I sat at the table and I drew this face, which is, represents the way I felt for that last five years, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I made a poster of it and sent it around to all the different design people, and it sort of influenced the Rolling Stones uh, uh, a ton, like Jagger. Well, and then... The face actually yeah, was... Yeah, the face then, uh, I did 20, uh, 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 through, a, through a process of somehow or another people getting the printer trading with a billboard company, a billboard company with a uh, motorcycle company, I got 24 uh, billboards across LA and Orange County for KRLA, uh, the AM radio station at that time. And, uh, and I got to put the billboards in front of all the different record companies I was working with as well. So it was a great promotion. And then the next image is really interesting. You have to explain yeah, us then, more about this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so I, uh, one, of the, one of the stores wanted some uh, t-shirts. So I took the face and created this thing called Crazy World in it. And I was doing the album cover for uh, Mick Jagger, and, and uh, his assistant was a girlfriend of mine from London. And so I gave her about six or seven shirts, you know, and it ended up on his chest and in the, in the media. Uh, and then it was really like a trade. I, uh, the, the face that, that's on the Exile album cover is a, is, looks a little like Charlie Watt. So when I did the billboard, the four, the four faces there are relative to the identity of the groups in sort of an abstract, fun way. You know? So Mick Jagger is the 
uh, is a little butler, and right. and and uh, Keith Richards is the or no uh, uh, Charlie Watts is the face there, and the two uh, other members of the band, and and uh, uh, Richards is on the end. So yeah, this is a great yeah. So those are of all, the different all the top groups that I was working with and doing covers for. Yeah, this is quite impressive. These are more arty ones that were done. And, uh, you know, so I had, a, had probably a, a good 15 to 25 albums every year, sometimes 35. Wow, fountain yeah. of creativity. So I was always busy <laughs> one way or another. And the, and the way they're uh, distributed is like every three months. They, they uh, land in these stores and then you have a little bit of time and then they so every quarter there's all these records happening and all the campaigns so it was a great business advertising people didn't like the record music business and they were it was more of a traditional business so anything you showed in terms of music they didn't want to have anything to do with you so i, I uh, just excelled in the entertainment business but i can believe you had more freedom to create something yeah, more absolutely. exciting yeah. than in the yeah. advertisement absolutely business. So the next image shows that you were officially part of the 1984 yeah. Olympics as an artist. So they sent me a letter and I was uh, got engaged in this um, campaign. So I took the, the uh, sketch you see on the, uh, on the left there is that <coughs> is you, like all things that when you talk to people verbally, they don't quite know what you're talking about, even within the art form itself. And so I made a sketch. And then that sketch was uh, put into the architectural um, kind of group of the Olympic uh, uh, studio. And uh, they liked it, and, and so I got a 360-foot mural to do. And that was my, my big deal. And like a billion people saw it on TV, and you know, it was quite fantastic. Yeah. So this is kind of like a, a cross-section of, of passing through probably three decades of being a graphic designer into being an artist, meaning there's a transition from, from work that is sort of dictated uh, that it has to be done a certain way for various clients to having your own product. And so uh, this is re really how, uh, through my painting and drawing, uh, I was able to link that up with technology. And that's how I progressively got into the uh, working on murals. So yeah, the next image shows the yeah, symbols, so yeah. part of my graphic design work and bringing that over into into the art world was like I, I, I saw telephones and apps as sort of like logos, but they didn't have to be corporations. They could be thoughts. So I took these four symbols that, that had progressively gone through my work, which was the peace sign, the love sign, uh, the uh, yin yang, and the flower in an abstract kind of way. Beautiful. So you have to explain us more about the project you did in Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, so Alita and I got involved with in Las Vegas with uh, um, the um, Fremont Experience Group, and and uh, uh, Peter Max was about to do it, but he didn't work it out quite right business-wise, and so Alita and I became the the production company to do this mural, which was a moving mural in digital, and it was like. Uh, it was a, a, <coughs> a canopy that's like 1,500 feet long, and within that 1,500 feet is it has it has the uh, 17,000 LED lights, which act as almost like dots in a way, you know. And so through these computers and my uh, power book, I would feed my drawings in to this animation program, uh, locked into music. And I, and I was able to create this sort of illusion, you know, that ran for seven minutes. And uh, it was so fantastic to be able to have, have three or four different levels and the levels could change and go back and forth. So the imagery was uh, changing and moving, you know, almost in a psychedelic way, much like my posters. And so really that, that experiment or that understanding um, brought me back over into uh, my mural work. Yeah, I, I cannot imagine. I mean, amazing. How many people do you think saw this? I mean, uh, 80 million people saw it over <laughs> eight years. You know, it's a big movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> incredible. A seven-minute movie. Yeah. yeah. 
And then you mentioned that this truck was working. Well, you actually a started out with the the company as I was going to paint these trucks, you know, make them psychedelic, and 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 so I decided that 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 should be in the movie, and so that was brought over into the animation, and it has my characters in the in the windows, and uh, and then the <coughs> piece below is like a billboard that they uh, they drive around the town on the street, you know, so they could see the see the uh, kind of quality of the work. That's amazing. So in my studies at CalArts, um, uh, which I really attribute to being um, a study of, of being able to uh, make my own work as an artist, and I was studying um, uh, the Japanese Hindu, Hindu style, the, the floating world. And, and so that sort of has stuck with me, you know, through all of my work, even today. And so I would take, uh, so in this particular case, um, uh, Eric Clapton <coughs> was on tour and I was doing posters for him and they, they were in Japan. So I decided I would take from the floating world uh, a woman and then have her with this plane because the, it was like a Blind Faith uh, album. You know the blind, blind Faith album cover with the plane on it? So I was taking that plane and setting it into the Indo style. So as the style was developing, people would ask me, so can, I, can you take my trademark and do something with it? And so this particular thing is like a, a called Head Blades and I was able to make an abstraction out of that. And you can see the levels to it and the negative and positive space and the colors and all that. Uh, so then <clears throat> being a surfer, um, I ended up making a drawing of waves. And, uh, and so there were three or four different waves I was working on. So I got a job from uh, uh, Billabong and they wanted a wave. So I did this pipeline wave. And then it became a poster, a t-shirt, and you know, all kinds of different products for just one of my drawings, just a singular drawing, you know, yeah. being, and people loved it and they remember it and they talk about it. And then you always worked with different icons. Yeah, so over the years then you can see uh, all these, uh, what I, which is like a vernacular, all these different pieces and parts of, of how I make my mural, which are all kind of designed like typography. Uh, so, uh, but there's, um, there, they're patterns and they are symbols. And so by putting those things together, I'm able to, in, in these different levels, I'm able to make these illusions uh, abstractly. So these are three um, murals um, uh, for a show that I was in. And you can see the different layers when you get closer to it, it's wonderful yeah. to see. So the so the, uh, the 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 painting the abstract expressionist painter that I was and when I was uh, uh, 19 and 18, um, I would do these paintings on the garage floor in abstraction. So here I am, you know, using computers, and and making an abstract painting uh, in a square, and then that sort of got applied to the mural. So I was able to see the ingredients and the levels of of different colors and shapes that I could actually uh, uh, acquire from the painting and then put that into like a mural. Then doing the murals was that it, is it, because the painting is a canvas, the mural became 10 canvases all linked together. So I was able to have one 10 by 20 foot piece, but it was really made out of 10 uh, sections of my paintings. It's great. And when and then you buy those skateboards? that being applied, that yeah, and then that that creeps into product becoming a skateboard. Yeah, oh, that's a perfect match. And um, so you can see into the studio there, the paintings that were up on the wall, and then you can see the th the three of them across, and then the client is down below there, uh, looking over one of the. Um, uh, presentation pieces and it doesn't have any waves in it and the woman in pink is very curious like <laughs> what are we gonna do here and she <laughs> says I want some waves you know so we put the waves in and then that went through and then you can see the the installation so that led to uh, the Hermosa Beach 14th Street uh, um, uh, mural and and that is uh, an adhesive uh, backed uh, sheets of printed um, 
vinyl um, at, at 48 by, and it was like 17 feet at one particular point. And then those were all placed together, all in unison, and it sticks to the wall, and the wall had been prepared so it was like perfectly smooth. And, uh, and the really nice part of it is that the colors, you know, five or, I, I think it's like four years later, still is really good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I made the mural go right to the edge of the street, you know, or the edge of the sidewalk. Um, and no one really puts any graffiti on it, or if anybody does, the, the company comes by and cleans it all up and takes care of it. And you can see that the, uh, the piece is being worked out on a computer. Um, so I, I send a, uh, uh, an email to them at three megabytes, and then they buy, they blow it up three thousand times. Oh wow! To then make the particular sheets, and then they install that, and it's all one piece. It's like amazing. And then they match the colors to. The yeah, colors and they're matching paint. the color there. There, you know, let's, the the difficulty is that I work in. Uh, RBG and and they're in uh, CYMK, so they have to always take the black out and make it more colorful. So it's a little bit more complicated than just pressing a button. Yeah. So it really takes also yeah. some somebody labor. has a noodle through it. Yeah, and that's <laughs> the digital world. You're able yeah. to do that kind of thing. And this is a Hermosa mural, I believe, right? Yeah, there's a big crowd in front of it. And it's, you know, being, uh, um, you know, install. It's been installed. They're having a celebration, and I really like the photograph on the on the left uh, so much, just where the installer is like gazing back at the at the mural, <laughs> admiring his, his own, own work. <laughs> <laughs> what street is that on? Pardon me, Fourteenth and Hermosa Avenue. Yeah, it's very the easy accessible. The underground is the yeah. restaurant wall that it's on. Yeah. Okay. And, this and then you can, uh, so the, this would be like a drawing that I did uh, and, and was working on in probably 2001, 2002. And then you can see how that marries itself into the style of the, uh, uh, of the Hermosa Beach uh, mural, which is, which is called the Great Wave. So then we did a, uh, a piece for a home, uh, which was like uh, 10 by 16, something like that. And that Beautiful. was spectacular. And, and the house had a little bit of a window uh, uh, on, the, on the one top wall in the alley. So you go walking by the alley, you could see a little piece of it you know, sticking out there. It was, it was probably overwhelming inside the house. But the, the way the house was, it had this big, huge room and then and then the uh, bedroom was kind of up one story and it was open so you could actually see it from the bedroom. And uh, what material is this? Is this and, and that's done again in, uh, um, on vinyl, you know, done in sections. Beautiful. So it's like four across and two up, I think, or something like that. And then I'm sure everybody in Manhattan Beach remembers yeah. this. Uh, You've mural. seen that. Yeah. yeah. I always yeah. wondered, like, who did this? Now I know. <laughs> so the, you know, so I work in complexity, but I also work in simplicity. My simplicity goes into my complexity, you know. So I do like my simplicity, but people, some, some people view it as too simple, but it's more philosophical and more a part of design history, and so that's called my Corbu style, and uh, I. I get I get away with that every once in a while. Oh, the mural where it is, it's on in Manhattan Beach on Manhattan Beach Boulevard, right across the street from the park. Yeah, so that's 360 feet. It wraps around a circular building. So then we had a job downtown uh, with the Brookfield uh, Arts uh, people who uh, lease out all these buildings downtown, and so there's like a shopping center there at Seventh and. And fig, and I did a um, like a, a 180 foot uh, mural, six feet high, that that went in these sort of uh, fence gates all the way around, and then there was a uh, elevator uh, shaft that stuck out um, 25 feet, something like that, and then I laminated that as well, and uh, that was spectacular. It was like on a park at, at a at the uh, kind of top level and then the uh, uh, shopping center goes down in the ground to the first floor. 
Yeah, I mean, LA needs more of this colorful art. When you yeah. see the very grain, grain Yeah, the juxtaposition of, the, of, of, <laughs> of putting color into the natural architectural, you know, city that really deals more in materials, not in color. And then again, to use the beautiful symbols. Yeah. Works so these are the symbols again that you saw earlier, and those are being brought through into this project. You know, and love and peace, we all need that these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, that was the 60s, and this is the 2000s, and... Um, it's timeless. <laughs> timeless, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's not as intense as it was, you know. Right. There was really a society that believed in those symbols. And so now it's sort of a, kind of like a, they sort of look at it strangely and, oh, I see, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this project uh, was for? Uh, this was for uh, the avocado, what do you call it? The um, California Avocado Commission. And they wanted four murals in four different towns. And so I uh, made the, made the, um, the drawings up and this was one for San Francisco they were painting. They meaning, uh, um, so this is where I broke from training and, and a, a company uh, was hired from New York to paint it, you know. So they still follow all my lines and all my shapes and they trace that all out on a, on a, on a white field, you know, in sort of a um, graphite and then they paint in all the piece, uh, you know, sort of like a, um, you know, you know, just uh, uh, paint by numbers, really, right. in a way. Yeah. So, but by using now the new technology, the colors actually stay yeah. longer, yeah. and it's faster, especially if you install something for corporations, you pretty much are in and out in one day. So yeah. it works actually better. And where is this? So uh, this is the uh, Bank of America downtown, the Calder building, or the Calder sculpture. And the, uh, um, these are my composer uh, portraits that I had uh, uh, designed over the, over the, you know, through posters and prints and all that through the, uh, the years. And so we made these uh, tra transparent kind of, you could, from the inside of the building, you could still see out. From the outside of the building, uh, you could see the images. So it was like they were perforated, but they were quite successful. And then they had, it was linked up with the, um, uh, LA uh, music, LA chamber. Oh, of course. Yeah. Chamber, yeah. yeah. And then they would play the music to each one of the composers uh, through uh, for the two or three weeks. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, this was for Vans, Vans, the shoe company. It, uh, it was the inside of their um, uh, their cafeteria. So how long is this? This looks also fifty enormous. feet. Fifty feet, yeah. beautiful. And I believe this lady with the hearts, it's yeah, also she's the a water drawing tank. The, she's yeah. a drawing and a print that's been carried over through the years in all kinds of different work. And then, wow. So this, this is, is so called nice. the ninth wave, and there were um, probably seven or eight waves that were put in a step and repeat, and then, and then, and then the, uh, uh, in the different repeats, I would change the backgrounds and the foregrounds quite effective, really beautiful, and put on glass. Uh, yeah. Well, it was uh, at Wells Fargo uh, on Hope there, um, you know, in between two buildings that were under construction. It was just sort of to block out the construction inside the building. And then they, then they, were, gonna, then they were gonna put up another <coughs> facade and, and um, uh, work, on, work on the uh, uh, changing the trees and putting in lawns and all that. Alita and I uh, work on these projects together. She's the business side, she's the producer, and I'm the lonely artist trying to figure it all out, what it's gonna look like. Well, thanks to Alita, <laughs> we have this wonderful mural. So she really worked hard, you know, to get the Department of Water and Power to get it done. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, shall we move towards the water tank? Yeah, you all show probably the water tank, yeah. You remember how it used to look, so uh, yeah. Very so I was uh, being inducted <laughs> into the uh, high school hall of fame here, and and uh, Suzanne had had met me probably 
almost a year ahead of time, something like that, and they worked it all out. And then I, you know, went into this uh, auditorium and I was inducted, you know, and then I walked out to go to lunch and we went down to, to a room where we were able to sit down together and I was just about to get into my food and, and Suzanne comes up to me and says, would you do a mural for us? And I, I said, well, go talk to Alita, you know? So <laughs> she went down to Alita and, and, uh, and they talked about it and then we had a meeting and I think this, uh, the, uh, we started in September, so we had the meeting in February out in front of this big rusty tower and they asked, could you do this, you know? So we had to figure it out, we had to work out all the engineering and what kind of a, a surface it would be and how, um, uh, how long it would last, all that. <clears throat> and so we all went to work and, you know, it turned into this great thing. Okay. So this would, like all things that, um, that are developed like this is that you, you tend to um, talk about it, but each person comprehends it differently based upon their education, you know, so it's complicated. So uh, how I try to clear that up is that I make models. So all of a sudden, three-dimensionally, you see it, you know, as a model and it changes your whole perception. Um, and then you ask, well, how can we do this? How is it made? How is it engineered and all that? And so then everybody would, the engineers would get a hold of the, um, uh, the, the printer and the two people would talk and work it all out until we finally got it, uh, uh, a bid for it, and then it went through. So um, Suzanne, of course, said in some of the model making that it was too simple, too, more, you know, too much of a, more of a designer kind of thing for architecture. Uh, she said, would you uh, please put waves in it? <laughs> so everybody loves the waves. <laughs> so it's a so, happy so, then, yeah. <laughs> so then doing a drawing, you know, is that I normally draw these really tight kind of negative positive drawings, you know, it's almost like uh, doing typography. What is the what is the negative space? What is the positive space? And and, and sort of this uh, back and forth thing which just takes hours and hours to do. So the this way really comes out of just a drawing, a quick you know, a sketch drawing, and, and uh, it just had, it had a vitality to it, mm -hmm. you know, kind of an anger. Uh, I said, well, we'll use that, you know, so then I coupled that with my um, vernacular of symbols over the years, and so really around the tank uh, are uh, 50 images that are really from, from my uh, uh, work, which is really like a museum in a way, you know. So now it's a landmark, it's almost like a place that you can go out to see my work, you know, like a museum. Like, oh, he did that, he did that. Yeah, if you yeah. go on Google Maps, you mentioned if you put in a uh, water tank mural, it pops up, it shows you where it is. So that's really amazing. Yeah, so we made it. <laughs> yeah. Made it on Google Maps, yeah. It's not obscure, it's a landmark now. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's looking at sections. Um, and so you can see how I very much like the, uh, we'll go back to the uh, Fremont uh, uh, mural, the uh, digital um, dome sort of thing. Um, that, that idea that you can have things on many different levels. So it, 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 was, it was the clouds bring you forward and the waves take you back and then in between you sort of see these figures that kind of float mm -hmm. back and forth. But I think the, what the, 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 the clouds are like having polka dots that capture your symmetry. Mm -hmm. And your, uh, your, they become gravity to you. And you, you have to you say, well, I'm, I'm locked in here, so what am I doing here? <laughs> and, then, and then your sight goes to the background and you see things, you go back and forth. Yeah, so I see a helicopter. Yeah. Well, then I, uh, for the uh, for El Segundo, I had to put in this uh, the helicopter and the um, uh, uh, the stealth uh, bomber. Okay. My father worked on the stealth bomber. He used to work at Northrop. And I think also the smokestacks you had to put those. Oh in yeah. Too. So <laughs> then for for Marty, who is the DWP, you know, and he tells his Samuel, he says, Samuel, I want. I want the identity <laughs> across the street on the uh, on the on the mural, and you know I could argue it in a way, you know. But I said okay, I, uh, so I started to draw it, you know, and and it and it's just such an awful 
<laughs> stupid thing, you know. So I, so I was able to bring it over into my style and, and stylize it. I know, think it and it looks great. lovely. But then yeah. it's sort of pasted on there like right there. That's where you want it. <laughs> yeah, let's see if you can find it. Yeah. <laughs> And it was quite amazing how they installed all these panels. Yeah, so the, t the panels are 10 by 32 feet and printed on a, a fabric that's, that's um, from Germany and, and, uh, and it's, it's porous so that the wind and the weather can go through it, you know. But uh, on this 14 inch printer, a 14 foot printer, if you can imagine, you know, and this sheet coming out of it 10 by 32 feet and laying on a table was really quite fantastic. And then seeing the grommets put in and then going out to the site and, and on, uh, where they unroll the stuff and then the, uh, the, the crane takes it up and then they install it. It was like fantastic watching the modules being yeah. put in. Yeah, yeah. every day yeah. when I came from Esmo driving home, I saw another section being yeah. installed. It was quite exciting. And then yeah, here we have the opening, I believe. Yeah, that's my favorite photograph. This is the opening and the yeah. people walking around in context of the mural. And this is a great image um, from all the way up there. Yeah, so Marty downtown, the president of the uh, DWP, uh, uh, said, uh, "You want a helicopter ride? And you can take a look at it." You know, so I so I drive down there and I go up. The, you know. Uh, you know, the, the Water and Power Building it was like one of the first big events of downtown Los Angeles in the 60s because it had this kind of a pool uh, with these colored swatches of light, uh, uh, you know, water coming up and everyone would look at and say, wow, look at that, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it was funny to arrive there and then, and then realize where I was, you know, <laughs> and then to go up to see see uh, Marty and Marty says okay so then I go up another couple of floors and get in this helicopter and and they take me out to Santa Monica and then and then and ride me down to the uh, um, uh, to the to El Segundo and then I got to circle it about eight times taking photographs of it and then uh, going down to PV and then to San Pedro and then from there going back into town you know and looking over it it, it, it changes your whole sense of the pla of place in a way, you know, and um, and you just you have to, it's different from an airplane. It's a completely different situation because you're closer to the ground, you know. Mm -hmm. And to see all these houses go by, the pools and the cars and everything, you know, it's just like a carpet of of uh, of, of human uh, you know uh, preoccupation with objects, you know. Yeah. And then and then the cityscape comes up, and then. You know, then you see the uh, downtown, you see the city hall and everything. It's just, you know, it was just a delightful ride, but it's a fantastic photograph. Yeah, and I'm sure when you flew around, you saw like many more water tanks <laughs> which need murals on it from Chevron as well. So that would be amazing. So this is the so, aquarium. So uh, in San Pedro, this is the uh, Gary uh, design for the uh, um, Cabrillo uh, Aquarium. Marine Aquarium, and so I, um, so they asked me to do a mural for uh, the the store, and so we did th three murals for the store on three different sides of it, and I um, I'm drawing my waves up, which is again very much the negative, positive, all that, um, and a laborious process of trying to make the uh, white and black balance back and forth, and still keep the subject. Um, uh, as a wave. So then the, um, between the, the pelican and the seagull, those are like flying objects, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm getting, so they're like the clouds, they float, they change your whole perspective, you know, because okay? it's, it's a flat plane, but the, the flatness of the, of, of the bird is such that it's almost dimensional in a way, and then it starts to float, you know. Oh, yeah. So with the waves, I mean with the clouds and the waves, um, you know, this atmosphere is sort of set, put to, put to color and, and, uh, and so I really, uh, and then um, I had to make it local, so it, that's the Palos Verdes Peninsula as it goes out and I made it more modern. And then Point Furman is, uh, uh, mm -hmm. is the lighthouse on the end. 
so that it had a landmark to it. So this would be like the sketch for the third mural, which was the, uh, called Octopus. And uh, I was struggling to figure out how, you know, how to do this, you know, because I'd never really, I was always working in more of a symbology rather than a narrative. Or if it was a symbology, or if it was a narrative, it was still symbol oriented. You know? mm -hmm. So uh, uh, getting this, um, getting this seaweed to a plant, you know, to be sort of a, a, a way of developing space underwater, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so th there's different levels of seaweed in different colors, so you really get this sort of feeling that you're like right there, you know, and then the fish, uh, I always gave them personalities, you know, so you got involved with them, and then the bubbles were like the clouds, they separated everything and gave you a dimensional quality to the, to the, what you were reading in front of you. Yeah, this is just an amazing image, it's beautiful. And then the octopus, you know, which is, uh, um, which the director of the museum calls an alien. Octo octopuses are aliens from outer space. <laughs> and really, in a, I think in um, Arrival, you kind of get that, that, did you see Arrival? You get that sort of sense that it's like an octopus behind the glass there in the smoke, huh? Don't mm -hmm. you? So, um, so I gave the the uh, the octopus a personality, and <laughs> and, uh, and put uh, the the polka dots on it. But we were reading a bunch of stuff about uh, the uh, these drugged uh, octopuses that get together, you know, th that would <laughs> probably tangle with each other, all of a sudden love each other, and so it has that sort of sense of humor to it. If you were an octopus fan and read the article, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ecstasy was the drug, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful how it wraps yeah. all around the architecture. Yeah. It just takes it really to a different so level. So Frank Gehry is in gray and white, you know, and all the shapes and forms and, and the, and the uh, chain link, you know, during that time and everything. And then all of a sudden there's this little building on the end, which is then the gift store, which is just lit up like with this graphic uh, narrative. Uh, yeah, that's one of the other murals of the, yeah, the, the seagull is, just really works. And, and then down, down in the, uh, the wave, there's a shark in there, so you oh, find yeah. the, you, you discover that, you know, which is very much, if you were in the ocean, you know, you would look at the ocean and you would see a <laughs> shape going by and you would say, wow, look at that. Wow. Amazing work. I mean, I'm, I really loved learning more and more about your mm. work and seeing all these bright images. So thank you very I'll much. Leave this business manager <laughs> there, so. Well, yeah, thank you. Well, thank you for coming. Yes, thank you very much for coming. Mm -hmm.